Welcome to analysis of algorithm uh, one. So this is the uh, first lecture. Uh, in this lecture, I will briefly um, introduce the uh, notion or the definition of an algorithm. What is an algorithm? And we're going to start from a very exciting problem to solve and see how we can derive the definition of an algorithm from this problem. And uh, this problem is actually called the travel, uh, the traveling salesman problem. Then after that, the last part of this uh, lecture, I will give an introduction to uh, to the um, notion or definition of a, a behavior of an algorithm. How can we uh, define or study or examine the behavior of algorithms and you guys learn a little bit about asymptotic classes but in the next lecture we're gonna dive even deeper so this is just a very shallow introduction to algorithms great so here let's look at this problem and the first thing you guys will do is to think about a possible or potential solution to this problem so what is the problem first thing we need to state the problem clearly we need to write it and articulate it what is it that we want to solve so problem statement so here uh, our goal is to find the shortest tour or route connecting all cities to visit so there is a traveling salesman who wants to sell his goods right he doesn't want to uh, waste his energy and time. He wants to visit all these cities. So these are each dot here represents a city to visit, right? And he's going to start from this first uh, like city. Let's call it city P1. And his goal is to find, to go and sell his goods, but by following the shortest possible route and then come back to his uh, basically uh, source or originating city okay the first city he started walking from so this is okay this is the goal uh, so I'll give you just a minute and I would like you guys to write down what could be a possible solution to this one how can you think about what is what kind of rule you can uh, define to find the optimal solution how can this guy behave uh, or walk like around these cities in such a way that his the distance that he will um, the distance between all, uh, uh, you know, the overall or the average distance uh, along this path will be minimal. Okay? So I'll give you one minute to think about this, or just two minutes. So if you were this guy, how... Uh, what kind of, you know, like, what is, how, how will your strategy be? How would you go about this? So one of the dumbest ways is say, okay, I'm starting here, but I'm going to visit far away city right and then like start from there right maybe so that's not a good approach right you want to minimize the distance so you want to maybe start to explore those which are the cities that are closer to you you will not go far away and come all the back all the way back sorry to visit these cities right so you, you don't want something like so complicated and uh, like tiring You can always go to the closest city, but then you can end up uh, in a really far away place. Yes, so but you follow the closest city, so you yeah. cross the minimum distance. So one thing is like, maybe visit the closest city to me. So let's say maybe this is the, well, maybe, I think it's, okay. This is the closest one, and then the nearest one, maybe this one, and then just compute the distance between this point, this city, and all other cities, and walk to the uh, closest one, so basically this one. So, but the problem here, I visit, I already visited this city, okay? I don't want to visit it again. So the thing is, you want to find the shortest tour while visiting each city only once. You don't want to revisit it because you already have, you know, uh, sold your goods there. So, right, so after maybe you can go to uh, this one, right? Okay, so that's a good starting point, you know, following the nearest neighbors. Actually, this is the first solution, okay? So what is the problem we want to solve? 
So to formulate it mathematically, given a set of points P1 to Pn, right, we want to find the optimal permutation sequence such that the sum of the distances uh, between two consecutive points is minimal, which means the path length is minimal. Why is it the permutation? You guys can see that. So if we have like a set of points, these are like my points, P1, P2, P3, P4, etc. Like P5, Pn, uh, negative 1, Pn. So at the beginning, I have a random path, right? This is maybe not optimal. But my goal is to kind of, you know, shift these around in such a way that I will have a path starting at P1 and then maybe crossing over to, well, here in this example, P2, P3, P4. But let's say in a different example, it might be just random. So A, T, P, like 100. So this is what we call a permutation. So you want to find the best, the optimal sequence in such a way, if you walk from this city to this city to the next one, your path will be optimal. Okay? Great. So this is how we formulate it or formalize it mathematically. Now, let us think about a first solution to this problem. So here, considering a neighbor of a neighbor. So we're walking to the nearest neighbor. So uh, for this example, I'll just explain. So this is my nearest neighbor. Okay, let me just use... This one, okay, so this is the nearest city. The next nearest one is this one that was unvisited. And then I go to this one. And then here is, this is my tour. Okay, so that's the shortest tour in this case. Now, this is actually uh, the uh, solution to this problem. It, we call it, it's the uh, nearest neighbor tour. So the idea is to start at P point or city P1 and walk to the nearest unvisited neighbor p2 okay so the city needs to be unvisited so you need to keep track of the cities that you have visited right to know that the city has been visited or not then repeat from the last visited point p2 until we go back to our origin p1 okay so this is the solution statement now if we write a pseudocode we want to code it up like we want to uh, write a set of instruction to uh, design a solution to this uh, problem. So given a set P of uh, PN cities or list of N points, this is how um, the code will work. So first we pick and visit an initial, an initial point P1. And in this set V, we're gonna keep track of all like the cities that are visited, okay? The V set keeps track of all the cities that we visit along the way. Now, while there is there are unvisited points, Okay, which means the cardinal, so this is, you know, here it means like, uh, there are different notations, uh, mathematical notations for cardinal. This is one of them. It means the number of points in a set, okay? As long as it's like smaller than uh, n, then we keep on selecting, you know, the next point pi uh, as it is the closest unvisited. So since we try to look for the next pi that is closest and unvisited point to the current point pi negative 1, visit pi and next what we're going to do add it to our list and we're going to do this over and over again until we visit all points so there's a while loop and then add the last point to v last instruction return to p1 from the last point okay and this is exactly what we have run right here this is uh the solution now let's look at this case right so we have a first solution to this problem Let's try it on these two cases. There are two different cases. The first one is this one. So for example, this is our first city, P1. We're gonna walk, apply this algorithm basically. Well, I call it algorithm. It's actually an algorithm, but we will like, uh, I will explain it later on. So let's call it for now solution, okay? And then walk to the nearest point. So let's say the nearest point, it's this one actually, okay? Then the nearest point starting from uh, this city, uh, well, these, are, these guys are far away. I cannot walk towards them, but I can walk towards this one. Okay, so now you guys can see it's quite uh, trivial here. It's uh, very easy. So this is my tour, and then I go back to this uh, point by following the nearest neighbor uh, rule. Okay, now in this case, we have another case. Let's look at this solution it's still valid or it works on case two, okay? So let's see case two, what is happening here. So these are my points, right? So uh, we have like a, a set of points, our origin is at zero, 
and we want to walk like to find basically walk from zero and visit all points all cities come back uh, well here like let's say we start at zero ultimately we want to come back to uh, zero so how does it work in this way so if we apply the algorithm okay we start from zero we walk to the nearest point one then from one which one is nearest okay I can select basically three or negative one but let's say I choose negative one okay then from negative one uh, the unvisited points is either three or negative five so let's say I go here to negative five then I have three options one two three left so the closest one is three okay then from three I go to the next unvisited point okay it's 11 or 23 so it's 11 okay and then the last point and then I go back to my zero so do you guys do you think it's optimal what is just sorted fat if you look at this it's just a line right like uh, and then you can close it at some point right but here this solution for this scenario if you have this kind of you know <laughs> um, uh, alignment of cities it's not optimal now you can see that walking uh, to the closest point is too restrictive which means we're just restricting our you know like uh, our approach is very um, it's limited to just the nearest neighbor that we can see but to find the shortest tour you don't need to just look locally you need to look a little bit globally too right so let's think about another solution so here if we think about a different algorithm what kind of rule so the first rule that you guys suggested is to walk to the nearest neighbor okay so just uh, the nearest point but if you look at this scenario this case maybe we can find a better solution right we can design a better solution to this problem any ideas so right so I would like you guys to think in terms in an abstract way so when you design your solution you say okay the rule that I'm following is to walk to my nearest neighbor or the rule I am following is first to find this and that and that so try to write down and state the key rule or key instruction that your solution will be rooted in or based on okay so just think about it you don't need to give me so like you know you don't need to give me answers but I want you to write down each one of you I want you to write down something okay so I'll just give you one minute yes closest K neighbors distance so the thing is you um, this is what we have done so you said you find for each point you find its closest neighbor so this is my point right here okay so let's say I start from this one and then the closest the K closest neighbors for example K equals to 3 so these are the K closest neighbors right but then I will always walk to the nearest one and this is actually what was in the uh, in the nearest neighbor algorithm no <laughs> So what you're saying, it's okay, so you're trying, so you said like, okay, we're finding the K nearest neighbors, then after finding those neighbors, what do you do? You add them to the path? No, you add them to what? It's like it's finding the little uh, global solution. Huh, the global solution. Okay, so I might, I'm, I'm not sure I get your idea, but you gave me an idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry, yes? There could be a learning solution, uh -huh. depending on the size of the point. Of course. Now, if there are 15 points, uh -huh. there could be one where we find uh, three uh, nearest neighbors and uh -huh. find the solution for those three. Nearest neighbors, so a neighbor of a neighbor, yes. 
your nifty point. Okay. That would be two levels. We find three closes. Then and then the closes of the three. closest. And we find three enough closes for those. I like the idea. I thank you. So this is what we call so a neighbor of a neighbor. And those numbers three would depend on the side as well. So So this is something to think about. I haven't tried this algorithm, but this is what we call the composition rule. And the composition rule is very it's actually the baseline if you guys have uh, um, heard of deep learning. It's, you know, it's a, a neighbor of a neighbor or a transformation of a transformation or, you know, like an algorithm of an algorithm. So this composition rule like permeates the whole field of computer science. So here, for example, you say, I look at these three neighbors and then for each neighbor, I'm going to explore its also closest unvisited neighbors, for example. And then basically, instead of just jumping directly to this one, I'm going to select the one that will allow me um, ideally to have the shortest path according to its local neighborhood. So this is like, you know, just uh, expanding your, your neighborhood to more than one neighbor. So maybe uh, a neighbor of a neighbor or a neighbor of a neighbor of a neighbor. Okay, this is a good, uh, a good uh, way of thinking. I'm not sure how it works, but that's maybe something we can study during this course, like the algorithm you just described, how it works. Yes, any other ideas before uh, I go? Yeah. If, I, if we okay, have next. a thousand points, if we have a thousand Best, right? Yes, so this is the thing. Like, if you have, like, yeah, so if you have a small set of points, it might work, but then how does this solution, uh, will this solution work when we scale up the, the, uh, the, the number of points, when we have, like, like, millions of points? So this is something to think about. Good, so now let's look at the a potential solution to this one. So basically here, this is uh, one possible solution, and it's called the closest... Uh, the closest uh, pair uh, solution. So how does it work? So first, uh, we connect the closest pair of points. So we find the short segments, okay? We, we find the points that are close to each other that have minimal distance. We connect them, okay? Uh, in such a way that we will not have a cycle or a three-way branch uh, when connecting these pairs uh, of points until all points are in the tour. So this is, you know, the solution here. So basically we loop over all points and then for each pair of n, of n points, basically S and T, these are two cities, okay? If the distance between these two points or two cities is smaller than D, so first we initialize D as like with a large number. Uh, so if it's smaller than D, then we uh, record or like save its distance and then uh, save the points SM and TM. So these are the new, like basically the endpoints of the segment that we will connect together, okay? And we're gonna loop over this, so we're gonna repeat this over and over again until we find the optimal uh, or the, the shortest pair of points to, um, the, the closest pair of points to connect. And once we connect them, we're gonna loop over again and then at the very end we will connect just the two endpoints by an edge. So how does this work if we apply it here? So the closest pair of points in this example, uh, let's say these are two similar, okay? So we have uh, short segments, the shortest distance between pairs of points is these guys, okay? And then next one is this one, then we connect negative 1 to negative 5 and then 3 to 11 and then this is the last one and then the idea is to just connect basically the end points of my long segment okay so this is how the closest uh, uh, pair algorithm basically works and let's look at this case so does it uh, does this solution basically work on this case so let's see here closely so here we have the closest uh, pair tour, and we're going to connect the segments that are close to each other. So, guys, I would like you to look at this and think. Okay, so here what do we have? The distance between these two points is 1 plus, uh, let's say, uh, E. That's a short distance, like an epsilon, okay? And the distance between these two points is 1 uh, minus E. Okay, so the first thing, we need to uh, connect the closest points, okay, without forming a cycle. So let's start, let's apply the algorithm. How does it work? 
Okay, first thing, we need to start with the short distance. Short distance is 1 minus 8. So I connect these two. Then what next? I can uh, connect these, okay? Three segments because they have the shortest distance. Next, I can, uh, we have different options. I can either connect this one or this one or this one or this one, right? I need to just pick one of them because they all have the same distance, okay? 1 plus E. So let's say I connect this one. Now, my question to you guys, can I uh, select this one as next pair? No, because it's going to form a cycle, and we are not allowed to form cycles. Good. Now, we're gonna, I'm going to select then this one. Okay, and the last two ends, now I have connected all my points, you guys can see. So I'm going to join the end points of my long segment. So you guys can see that in this case, the closest pair tour solution gives me uh, a very long path to connect my points. Do you think this is a good solution to this case? No, okay? Now, what is an ideal solution? Ideally, a rectangle. a rectangle, so simple. But my solution or my uh, my designed algorithm could not see that, right? It won't work on this case. So you can see here that to design a good algorithm or a good solution to a specific problem, so we start from a problem, we try to design a solution or an algorithm to solve this problem, then hopefully, once we give an input to our computer to run this algorithm, it will give us the desired output within a specific time. But the problem is that you can see you can design many solutions, but not all of them, uh, like basically, will work on all cases. So you can see that it's very challenging to find a very good algorithm that works on all possible input data. So our input data was these basically. Uh, these graphs or these uh, data points, okay? Now, what is the definition of an algorithm? Uh, so this is from the book, uh, The Algorithm Design Manual. So there are different, there are many definitions of the word algorithm. How can we potentially define an algorithm? But um, there is no universal consensus on the definition of an algorithm, but generally it can be defined as a sequence of unambiguous instructions, which means your instructions are clearly stated, anyone, can understand that very clearly for solving a problem. And by what we mean by solving a problem is getting the required or desired output for any, okay, this is important, any legitimate input in a finite amount of time, okay? So it means that your algorithm will run these all these instructions, but then ultimately it will work on any case. This is, you know, one definition of algorithms. Now let's look at the, uh, so when you guys see this tiny brain, it means it's something you need to remember. Okay, it's important. So you need to remember that. And uh, so here, the algorithm, an algorithm or algorithms in general, they must satisfy different criteria. The first one, it should have an input. So this can be uh, zero or more quantities, so it can have none, that's trivial, right? But usually it has like something, like some input data. Uh, and it has an output, so at least one output, okay? So the an algorithm should produce at least one output. It has, It is what we call definite. What does it mean? It means for each instruction, each instruction in the algorithm is clear and unambiguous. For example, at six, uh, or 7 to x is not permitted. Like the algorithm cannot know. Like if you're gonna write, oh, add 6 or 4, or 4, or like add 6 or 7 to x, right? So your statement needs to be very clear and non ambiguous. Now, the other, the fourth one, the algorithm needs to be finite, which means uh, if we trace out the instructions of an algorithm, then for all cases, right, this is important, the algorithm terminates after a finite number of steps. So it needs to reach an end, it needs to converge. It cannot loop over for infinity, right? Like, so your algorithm needs to converge. And we can also add effectiveness. So in some definitions, this is included, or in others, it's not, which means, you know, basically, uh, every instruction must be very basic. And it also, it's, um, it can be carried out by a person using only pencil and paper. So it must be uh, feasible. So if you're just, you know, running your algorithm by hand on a piece of paper, it should work. 
And effective here, it doesn't mean also like it's feasible. Effective, it means it will uh, produce the output you want, okay? So it will give you your output within a limited or an optimal time, okay? So it's very, uh, uh, so that's more like efficient. So efficient is like, you know, it gives you the output within a limited, let me write it down. So I'm going to explain it later. So there is a difference between effective and efficient. Efficient, it means, you know, its time is low. So when you run your algorithm, it runs fast, you know, so you have a good efficient solution. Effective, it means actually what it means. It means it delivers the output. So it actually converges. It delivers the desired, the desired output. Okay. Now there is one thing. So guys, let's look at this question now. So do you think that the closest uh, pair tour uh, for or the nearest neighbor tour is our correct solutions to the traveling salesman problem? Do you think these solutions are correct? No, no they are not, right? And we have proven that by what we call counter examples. So we found examples where these solutions or these algorithms do not work, okay? So correctness is very important uh, in algorithms. So here, uh, there are three desirable properties for a good algorithm. So uh, first is what we call like, you know, the algorithm needs to be correct and efficient. Also, easy to implement in terms of coding up, how you're coding it up. So when you say uh, correct, it means that your solution can work on all cases, okay? And when you say efficient, it means it has uh, the lowest time in terms of uh, how many steps it takes or how, how much time it's taking to uh, output your, 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 uh, your, what you want, basically your solution, okay? So correctness is very important. So sometimes uh, correct algorithms usually, usually come with a proof of correctness. So there, are, there is some mathematical proof to show the correctness of algorithms, but we're not going to look at that a lot during this course. Uh, but uh, this is very important, it's a whole field, checking the correctness of an, an algorithm. Explain why we know that the algorithm um, must take every instance of the problem to the result, re desired result, which means whatever you give to your algorithm, it always will uh, give you the right solution. And this is amazing. If we can prove the correctness of the solution that you're proposing, uh, and show, demonstrate that what works on all cases, it means your algorithm is a rocking star. But this is not always obvious. Even proofs of correctness are very hard to get. Okay, now here there are different things. So uh, is there a correct solution to the TSP, uh, traveling salesman problem? Uh, the actual answer is no. There is no correct solution. So up to this point, no one has found a solution to uh, this problem. It's a very difficult problem to solve. It's one of the classicals in engineering and computer informatics. And actually, uh, well, I would say in terms of correctness, I need to mention, sorry, <coughs> correct and good. Sorry. Yeah, so. Okay, so here's the thing. Very good. So here, if I write something. So if there is a correct, uh, let me write it down here. Correct. I would add a condition and efficient. Okay. So it means like for any data, you're always going to get your solution. Okay. So if I ask this question, okay, it's a no, you cannot, but if you want to find only a correct solution, only a correct solution that works, right? So what is the correct solution? But the thing is like you can find a correct solution, but it might not give you the result you want. So at the end, you might be running it for ages, but it doesn't, it doesn't give you the result you, you want if your data has a lot of points, okay? So it gives you an output, but it's not a satisfying output. It is a correct output, but... It's an output. Correct, output. Correct it means it's satisfying. It means like it has, it has, a, it satisfies the shortest path. So it find, it actually finds the shortest path connecting all cities. 
So that's a correct solution to the problem for this data. So if I give the algorithm this data, it always finds the shortest path, which is this one. If I give it this one, it will always finds the shortest path. If I give it this one, it always finds the shortest path. So that's a correct solution. So whatever you give it, it always gives you the shortest path, okay? But uh, let's see, how can we find, like, can you guys think about a very trivial or like simple algorithm to find a correct solution, yes? If we try all the permutations, very good. So here's the thing. So you have a set of cities like P1 to Pn. If you try all possible permutations, let's say starting from P1, then maybe you go to P8, I don't know, until Pn negative 1. So you, you try all possible permutations, right? So if you try all possible permutations, and for each permutation, for each sequence, you compute the distance, then ultimately... For, this is for uh, sequence 1, this is for sequence 2, etc. Ultimately, you're going to select the sequence with the smallest distance, right? And this will be your correct solution, okay? So this is actually uh, what we call the exhaustive search, right? So there is uh, try all possible permutations in P and return the sequence with the shortest distance, okay? Now, what does it mean? How many permutations we have? If we have, for example, n numbers, if my, um, if we have, for example, n cities, what is the number of permutations we have? n factorial. So this is actually uh, permutations with no repetition. So for example, if we have only three cities, a, b, and c, and you guys use this, uh, table right here to uh, enumerate the number of permutations. So you have different combinations. You create different combinations, right? But you're not allowed to repeat the same uh, city, which means you cannot have, for example, A, A, B, or you cannot have C, C, B, okay? So with no repetitions, this is factorial. This is a mere definition of a factorial. And you guys can see that this solution, okay, now it works, it is correct, but is it effective? Does it give you, so we know what effective means. Does it give you a correct solution? Does it deliver the right output? It delivers the right output. Now, efficient. Is it efficient? Ima imagine if I give the algorithm 20 points or 100 points, and you need to try out 20 factorial, basically, uh, combinations. Would that work? If you have a large uh, number of cities, it will not work. You guys will see. So let's look at factorial. Let's just refresh your memory. So factorial of 0 is 1. 1 is 1. 2 is 2. Okay. Then we have 3, 6. 4, 24. Now starting from 7, it starts to explode a little bit. And if we have factorial of 20, this is the number you get. Right? So, you know, if you have only 20 cities and you want to do exhaustive search, even in your lifetime, like basically you, you might wait like for a long time and not get the desired output, okay? So you can see sometimes um, here, well, it might take uh, a day, but if you have 1,000 points, 1,000 cities to visit, okay? And uh, you will not achieve it in your lifetime, right? Even with the supercomputers we have right now. So this is, you know, uh, this is really complicated problem to solve. And you can see that we can find a correct algorithm or a solution to uh, the traveling salesman problem, but it's not going to be efficient. So there is no, at the same time, as I mentioned, efficient and correct algorithm to this problem. And this is actually, this problem is also called the uh, problem of joining dots, and it's also known as the Hamiltonian cycle uh, that was uh, invented by Hamilton, uh, the Irish mathematician. Okay, now, just to find good algorithms, what you guys need to look for to, if you're designing an algorithm, the first thing you need to look for is counter examples. Can you make your algorithm fail for some cases? So searching for counter examples is the best way to disprove the correctness of an algorithm, okay? So if an algorithm works in some cases, uh, and fails in uh, others, it is generally called heuristic. So some people, it depends on how, uh, how do I say, how, uh, how strong in your belief you are when it 
comes to um, algorithm taxonomy. Some people use the word algorithm for only correct solutions. So they want to call the algorithms that are uh, basically incorrect, like for some cases, they do not work for some cases, but they work for many cases, but not every single case. They call them heuristics. But alternatively, if you want, you know, we can also call them, there is another notation for these algorithms, another uh a name for these algorithms, instead of calling them just heuristics, we can call them like greedy algorithms. So, uh, you know, greedy, sorry, not heuristics, algorithms. So they might work uh, on some cases, but not on all cases. Okay, they're still algorithms. Great. So just to recap, what did we see so far? We started from uh, a problem. We wanted to find a solution. We proposed different solutions, different algorithms. We saw that these algorithms uh, may not always work. They can be uh, correct, but if they are correct, they're not efficient, right? Uh, an algorithm needs to be what? Can you guys rem remind me of the criteria of an algorithm? What are the aspects? First, it has input, output, right? It should have an output. Uh, it is definite, right? Like has non ambiguous instructions. It is uh, finite. It means needs to converge and give you a solution within a limited time. Uh, ideally, we can add also uh, effective, so it means it delivers the output, right? Correct, it means uh, the solution is actually, you know, uh, correct, but for all cases, for any input data you have, you give to the algorithm. And what is the last thing that we're going to look at and focus on during this course? Efficient. How fast is your algorithm, okay?